Game engine technology is advancing at a pace the film industry can no longer ignore. You may have seen our collaboration video with Joel from the 3D Printing Nerd, where we scanned the Siege Bell in Valletta. This is a continuation to that video, so if Joel sent you here, make sure to leave a hi Joel in the comments. I'm here with Francis, our head of creative here at Stargate Studios, and we are in the Unreal Engine with a digital version of the Siege Bell. Can you tell me a bit more about this? So this is a model that was scanned by, by Stargate Studios and we used the LiDAR scanner and photogrammetry and eventually converted the point cloud into a mesh that has 66 million triangles. So what you're seeing right now, this entire so model. This is a level of detail which if you were to start modeling this in a 3D software, you'd just... You would never get there. I mean, you could, but the time that it would take to create something as authentic and realistic looking as this would be, would be very, very hard. It would be insane. So that is one aspect of technology that we have, which is the LiDAR and photogrammetry. Um, separate to that is Unreal Engine and real-time rendering and game engine technology. And what's really interesting over here is that these two technologies have only recently been, I guess you could say, such good friends. Um, Unreal Engine 5 has a new feature known as Nanite, which is a way of interpreting triangles of a mesh based on the distance and the field of view of your digital camera. And that lets you essentially throw in models with very, very, very high triangle counts without um, having your computer catch on fire because of the ridiculous amount of processing power that would be required. Yeah, so now that these technologies are suddenly, you know, becoming uh, better friends, as I said before, and more is possible, us as a visual effects studio, we're understanding, okay, how can we use the strengths of these new developments in our day-to-day -day operations? And uh, So give us some examples of where we would use this high-resolution model of something scanned in the real world, right? Imagine I was a director um, in America, right? And I wanted to film at the Siege Bell. Yeah. Um, previously, if I wanted to get maybe a, an accurate feeling of the site, I would need to catch a flight, come down to Malta, go there, look around, yeah. and go, ah, wow, it's, it's taller than I imagined, or wow, there's less space than I, I imagined there would be. But essentially, the director can wear his VR headset and stand inside that set and look around and get a very similar um, experience as if he were here in Malta. He could see, you know, if it's too close, if it's too far, if it works for him. And again, the best part of kind of working on it inside a game engine is all the rendering is in real time. So right now, as you can see, as I move my camera around, I am seeing an updated, like realistic looking version of my viewpoint in real time. If I move my sun, as I am doing now, you can see the light is changing in real time. If you're not using real-time rendering, what would happen is you're, you, you'd see a low-quality version of this frame. Till it eventually renders. You'd move your sun, you'd kind of hope it looks good, you'd hit render, wait for all those boxes to start rendering the image, and then hopefully it looks good. Yeah. So we mentioned... Um, Previs. Previs. We mentioned the virtual recce yeah. just now. But can this make final picture? Right, so that is where we're at. So what we're doing now in the studio currently is we're seeing, okay, can we use a game engine to render out elements and use them in our current VFX pipeline? Which has not gone down this route traditionally. No. It's only in the, re I guess you could say, maybe in the past two years that real-time rendering has managed to achieve a degree of photorealism um, when it comes to, let's say, uh, inorganic materials like um, stone, um, rock, iron, Right. Those sorts of things. So know. the technology is just getting there. It's just getting there. So I don't think photoreali photorealism works in real time for everything, but it works for some things. Right. And what we're doing as a studio is understanding where can we employ this technology to improve our product our, and our service by not just being better, but being more cost effective for us and for our customers. Exactly. Yes. Incredible. I think the, the, the most important part of this entire process is that we're using cutting edge technology to create assets a lot faster and with a high degree of accuracy, which in the world of visual effects is quite important. I mean, this is really fascinating stuff. It's incredible to see where our industry is going. 
and thank you for taking the time. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we close? Mm -hmm. I think what, what's interesting is that the, these technological developments we're experiencing in our industry are very soon going to have a ripple effect on a number of industries. You know, this technology is not limited to the entertainment industry alone, but we will be seeing, you know, architecture firms, engineering firms, uh, manufacturing firms, this all of tourism, um, culture, heritage, all of these tools are tools which are going to essentially invade all industries. And I think not just visual effects studios, but all um, companies around the world have to keep their eye on these technological innovations. Awesome. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, hit like. If you have a question, leave a comment below and we will get back to you. Ensure you're subscribed to the channel because we have plenty more videos coming your way. And we'll see you next time.